we shall consider today an important aspect of public administration an aspect which to many may look obsolete in the ruinous western concepts of state craft conquest conversions and economic aggressions and so on to us in india in hindustan nothing can be more important than dharma to bring it into economic considerations was something laughed at in our you know, indian universities as i have seen someone called it a dismal concept dharma has nothing to do with economics now poor fellows who said this didn't understand either dharma or economics in the hindu concept dharma and economics political administration polity all go together because without dharma nothing can happen let me give you from kautilya some very important ideas in this and in the next two three installments we will discuss very consequential ideas of kautilya you have heard of kautilya i suppose the great vishnugupta who single handed overthrew the misrule of the nandas navanandas of the magadha of those days the bihar of today and established a righteous rule laid the foundation of the mauryan empire and brought to the throne a maurya prince chandragupta who was practically unheard of in those days now this is from the neeti sutra of chanakya which i have translated and commented upon in kannada the first sutra of the first chapter says sukhasya moolam dharma dharmasya moolam artha arthasya moolam rajyam rajyasya moolam indriya jayah indriya jayasya moolam vinaya do we take up these five great sutras we very often talk of the so called welfare state as against the police state or the military state or other kinds of state one man administration was something laughed at by the so called democratic thinkers of the west one man is unfit to rule he must have a council of ministers even that one man must be elected by the people and therefore policing must be minimal military must be used minimal welfare state the concept of welfare state ruskin the great economic political thinker of the 18th century lost has ridiculed this idea he says for example wealth comes from the old english word weal w e a l which means well being money earned by well means can if if it that if that can be called well money earned by well means by hard work without exploitation without bringing pain to others if if that money comes from the right source it can be called well but money earned by bad means ill means should by the same logic be called ill he says wealth and ill the word ill is not to be found in the dictionary he calls this new word ill earned money will certainly ruin the state ruin the emperor or the ruler it will bring unheard of hardships to the people and therefore the concept of a welfare state has a, has to have a great and firm <clears throat> logically indisputable moral foundation i was speaking elsewhere about the distinction between ethics and morality 
The ethics is man-made, ethos. It varies from country to country, from generation to generation, from ruler to ruler. The ethics comes and goes. But morality is indisputable because it is God-made, nature-made. It's a gift of the higher forces of life. And therefore, in our concept of Hindu state, Sukhasya Muram Dharmaha, the ultimate goal of a state is to keep all the people in a happy condition, not in a state of perpetual disturbance. T.S. Eliot, the great English poet of the last century, <coughs> says, we cannot live in a perpetual state of revolution. So now look at the overtones of this great sentence. If you make people stand in a queue always, either for water collection or at a ration depot, or long queues in the municipal office for this and that favor, if you make people run between their homes and the Vidhans of that, that will, that will create a disturbed state. Where will people have time for music, for family affairs? Where will people have time for their higher pursuits, intellectual, spiritual, moral and so on? And therefore, you have to have a well-established society, a society without disturbance, either by the ruler or by the circumstances around social and all that. And therefore, Sukha, happiness, we, if, if that is the goal, Chanakya says, Sukhasya Muram Dharma. <clears throat> what is Dharma? Dharma is that which upholds society. Dharana, Dharma, Itya, Haru, Manusmriti. That which upholds life. Upholding means <coughs> keeping the people together. Keeping the people in a harmonious social, relational condition, people sound of body and sound of mind and if therefore <clears throat> Sukha is the goal as it ought to be, nothing else, not money earning. <clears throat> money is of no use if it cannot bring you happiness. Money is of no use if it doesn't help you to evolve. Anything that makes man plays one step forward in evolution, that can be defined as Dharma. We shall discuss it more at a greater length.